right, uh, good day to you. This is Sunday, and it is uh, October the 21st, 2012, and uh, this is Thomas Keegan here with LibertarianProgressive.com, where we interview independent and third-party candidates who are going to be on the ballot this uh, November the 6th, 2012, and uh, to give you uh, more information so you can make a more educated uh, decision on November 6, 2012. Uh, right now, the, you, you know, um, everyone thinks it's going to be just the same as always, Republicans, Democrats, but I, I think the paradigm has shifted a little bit because according to the recent Gallup polls, there's a 10% approval rating in Congress, and at the same time as that, there's a lot of qualified candidates who are not Republicans and Democrats who are on the ballot. It's about 70% of all the districts throughout our land um, have been uh, have independent third-party candidates, uh, such as Craig Allen, who's running in Oklahoma for District Number One. Uh, his components being, uh, I mean, I mean, his opponents, competitors being a uh, Jim. Brittenstein and uh, John Olson, the Republican and the Democrats. And uh, so uh, our hope is, uh, you know, there's a lot of people, um, uh, you know, thinking about their other options and maybe we'll have a record amounts of uh, independent third party candidates selected to Congress this year, which I see as a path of least resistance for positive change. And Cr Craig, uh, good, good to morning. talk to you. Good morning. And uh, th thanks for being with us and taking the time to do this interview. And um, what got you motivated? Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about your district, sir? Oh, I'd be glad to. It's the finest district in the state. It's um it's Tulsa, the surrounding area, uh, Bartlesville, and and then and the local communities uh, surrounding Tulsa, basically, Tulsa County, of course, included. And in, and in, in, it's it's a funny map. It really is pretty broad. But um, I'm a commercial airline pilot for a living. Uh, I don't say which carrier on purpose uh, at their request, of course. And um, I just feel like somebody has to do something different and take a different path. I decided that as an independent, and I was a lifelong Republican as an independent, I'm free of any of any ties whatsoever, and I'm free to represent the people without special interest. And I stand for smaller, much smaller, smarter government. And I think the government right now is, is so involved in every single minute and everything we do, and I don't like that. I don't think that's what this country was founded on, and I don't believe it's a good path to take. So... With that said, I'm going to do everything I can to put an independent into Congress. Yeah, and um, great, it's great. And uh, now, actually, in Oklahoma, there's I think almost every single district there's an independent. There, we've interviewed Michael uh, Folks and uh, R.J. Harris, and and maybe Oklahoma. I mean, if if any state could, maybe everyone in Oklahoma could send a message. Maybe even if you're not in Oklahoma, you might want to check uh, Craig out because. Um, Really, the decisions that he'll be voting on are d things that uh, will affect us all around the entire country. And um, Absolutely, and, and I would invite anyone to just go to CraigAllenForCongress.com. It pretty much spells it out. You can just click on me, Craig, and it'll give uh, a, a pretty good overall of what we're really trying to do here. And it is a very low-budget low budget campaign. I'm doing this basically on my own and have taken under $500 in contributions. Well, maybe when you're flying over, um, you know, the first district, you can throw out some, like, pamphlets or something and uh, <laughs> get some of your buddies to do that, too. Well, that'd be littering. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, now, uh, uh, it's, it's great. And, uh, so what are the, some of the things that, um, you, you know, we, we would hear from you that we're not going to hear from the – Republicans and the Democrats, from your own words, here. Sir. Well, I, I think I think some of the things probably will cross paths that that are going to be very similar. One of the I think one of the absolute absolute imperatives that we do something with this incredibly complicated tax system. You know, we're hiring eighteen thousand, I understand, more IRS agents to go go after people. Is that's the only reason you would ever have them in the first place? And I think it's just become way too complicated. And people need to be able to have some more of their money. We're, we're going to tax ourselves right into a hole, which I think we already have. I'm we're more very... taxed than, like, a lot of these socialist countries. I mean, if oh. you include, like, state and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, we're not quite to the France level, but some of France's things even work better than ours because of the way they structure them. But I'm obviously not... Um, 
well well enough first on, on French law. But I, I will tell you that one we just we have to do things differently. We are. I, I think everybody probably that is involved at all has listened recently to we're a trillion dollars just in welfare. That's eighty six welfare cross crossing over each other for welfare program of a trillion dollars. The military spent five hundred eighty billion, which is an astronomical amount of money, but and that's part of big government also. But we do have to have a strong defense. I believe we need a very strong defense. We need it here on this soil. But we have to get these programs reined in and find out what we're really doing. You hear all the horror stories every I heard two yesterday, just absolutely amazing of people taking advantage, cashing out all these food stamps, all these things. I'm all for helping people. I, I, I believe that that's what we're supposed to do. Do so you think there should be a safety net in case, you know? Well, it needs to be it, it needs to be scrubbed hard. I, I just think that we need to look at it. You know, someone said um, a single parent with three children gets about $1,200 a stamps. I don't know. I've never gotten well, well, I'm looking at your issues here. Is this where I usually go when I, you know, check out a new candidate um, or sure. any articles on them? There's a moratorium on foreign aid, so that's going to sp- save some money right there. there well, is... and, and, and it'll save, and let me touch it for a second. It'll save money, but it also sends a message that we're not just going to give every country in the world a bunch of money. Nobody else does it, but we do it, only to sit back and watch them basically throw, turn their head away and, and have nothing to do with as long as we give them money, the money doesn't go to those people. I wish it did. It would. It would. It would certainly clear up a lot of things. Yeah, I, I mean, that, that, and, and when you think about foreign aid and talking about defense, um, I mean, d- 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 you're right. We need to, you know, spend money and invest um, our time and energy on defense. But um, I mean, I would almost consider um, like, like our base in Germany or, or South Korea or Japan almost like foreign aid. Uh, that's, uh, you know, and you say bring all troops home from foreign soil. Um, I mean, you realize in, in 2000 and. Um, uh, three, we were spending $450 billion on the uh, uh, public known military budget. That's not including the wars. Um, the wars are on like a separate uh, pro- provisional bill or something like that. Um, so uh, we could save uh, tons of money. I, I mean, oh. and, and we're talking about welfare. We, we don't, we also mean, you know, the food stamps to like Goldman Sachs and places like that, which is, uh, you know, the bailouts. Everyone, that's what started the Tea Party and the Occupy Wall Street, these, these bailouts these corporations that miserably utterly failed and um and and they want to remain in business um in that we're just telling the free market hey you're not a free market anymore we're going to pick the winners and losers and we know what fixed pricing does um and and that's happening all around in almost every single industry uh there's uh special interests who have their um i guess tentacles they're they're minions are people that are like revolving doors in these agencies and and that can't be helping free trade i mean free the free market at all if we had a free market we might not have all these you know invasive tactics into our private lives um personal lives yet at the same time try to you know get an audit of of anything that our government's doing and uh it's very hard to do the mandate of the congress to have every single penny accounted for well, uh, mandates are another big problem, uh, as much as yeah. executive orders. 900-plus executive orders in the last three and a half years is absolutely staggering. If that doesn't scare you to death, nothing will. When, one of, when I say bring everybody home, I'm talking about troops. I'm talking about ground troops, basic, mainly in the Middle East. Now, when you talk about Japan and Germany, I, I don't think we should close the doors and walk away from it, but I don't think that we necessarily need 100,000 people there. Yeah, There's nothing. I mean, thousands a lot. Well, it's an, what I think in Germany, somebody said we have 10,000 uh, actual employees and with their families and everything, you get into those numbers. Basically, you're propping up their economy, too. They don't want you to leave. That money is spent on their soil, I, and I can certainly see why they would not want to. I do understand our presence is important in certain places, but the Middle East is absolutely not one of them. There, there is this, this is Middle East problem has been going on for thousands of years. Yeah, if they didn't have oil, do you think, I mean, uh, this is a kind of open-ended question, or, or it could be a direct question. I mean, w- do you think we would be, be as involved as we are in there if they didn't have any oil, if it was just desert? It's, it's funny you say that because somebody the other day said the only reason we're in Afghanistan is for the oil. I really hate to, to burst their bubble, but we don't have any oil interest in Afghanistan. Afghanistan is... 
but there's lithium there, and, and there's an oil pipeline right. yeah, that could go through there. Um, the, the, there are other minerals, and yes, of course, there are, and, and yeah. other natural resources that are, that are vital, but that's when you should get into free market trade and how things work that way. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe losing a single American life over there is worth any of those things so that the government can control that. Once again, the government is controlling everything, and we don't need to be over there. I've talked to too many troops that I don't even know what we're doing. We have to have permission to fire, fire it upon. We have to go through certain levels. I don't think that's wise. Yeah, we've been there over there 10 years. We accomplished the objective probably in the first two years, and we took the eye off the ball and went to Iraq. And, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I, we've been there longer than, you know, I think any war that we've ever It is the longest. Involved. Yeah, going on 11, and it, it, is, it is the longest, and it's time to go. There's, If we knew exactly what... If, Let's just let's make it even simpler. What was our initial goal? Did we reach this and we're done? One of the things that I, I get a little frustrated with... Yeah, is to obliterate Al-Qaeda, and now we're helping them in Libya and well, things like that. Yeah. Well, we have them right here at home. We just had three terror camps. They're all American citizens. They're Al-Qaeda terror camps were found in the United States. We need to concentrate on this soil first. We really, really do. I, I don't think people understand. You're, you're, we, didn't, we didn't abolish Al-Qaeda. So the Any Department of, of Defense's there. budget isn't a sacred cow, in other words. Um, and uh, but, but defense is important. But uh, I mean, there's a lot of things we we need about. What happens if we don't ba balance the budget? We're 16 trillion dollars in debt. Um, if if we have the same kind of representation we've had for the last probably like 14 years or whatever or well, 20 25. years. Um, we we probably will in four years be uh, 22 trillion dollars in that. That's just a guess, but it's that's like the projection that we're going. Right. Well, part of the, one of the things, another another thing that's very important. The CBO just came out recently, and 40 percent of the tax dollars are wasted. Senator Colbert from Oklahoma does a fabulous job with bringing out. He he published a book. It's all the waste. It's unbelievable the amount of money. We do not have a revenue problem in this country. Right. We have an expenditure problem. We spend money because it's not it's not their own. They just say, well, throw a couple million at that. And I realize that 10 or 20 million is not going to make any difference when you're talking trillions of dollars. But it really does add up. Yeah, it adds up. It goes to the principal. I mean, if I spend on these little things, why not on bigger things? Plus, I mean, what happens when the interest rate goes to like one, two, three percent with that, you know, almost twenty trillion dollars of debt? Um, it's going to take up the whole budget. The interest you payments. The amount of money, the amount of money in interest that the American taxpayer just paid since we started talking. How much is that? I, I mean, probably a lot. <laughs> oh, it's staggering. It's six figures a second. And it's just unbelievable. Wow. If you watch the debt clock, it, it's scary. But people don't want to watch it, and you don't turn it on because it reminds you of all the bad, and we're trying to find some good. So I think the good is going to be what we have to do. You said balanced budget, and my two opponents, great Americans, okay, before I ride off the bat. I'm not going to, and I don't ever get personal. I don't believe in it. I think it's a horrible way to be. But... They want a balanced budget. I want a balanced budget. But I want a balanced budget amendment. I want it to be. We all have budgets at home. Every, I don't know if anybody says that they didn't break their budget one month. They want to balance a budget like in 30 years. That's the Paul Ryan plan. The Democrats probably like, uh, who knows, probably 100 Never. years. Um, and Well, I think we can. But I think we can actually do it in a couple of years if we were just to absolutely get tough, really, really tough, really take a look at what, what we're doing. And remembering where all the money comes from, you have all the middle class pays almost all the taxes. And I'm not picking on the rich because that's not fair because they pay a lot of money. I have very wealthy friends that pay, oh my goodness, I can't, I, I just. Do you think a national sales tax would be the way to go? Like the, you know, fair tax or. Um... The, the fair, I, I believe that the fair tax that Neil Bortz has actually put together probably makes the most sense overall. One of the arguments is well, how are you going to have somebody that doesn't make. $25,000 a year, which, by the way, that's some airline pilots, which is absolutely atrocious to me, but they they don't they don't pay any. One of the things everybody needs to understand is where the money goes from income tax. But the prices talk, will adjust because, like, um, here's an analogy, like, um, like the, 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 the the cost already, like, uh, uh, let's take uh, something that's exactly $1 because it's easy math, um, like a Coke, Coca-Cola can, 
one dollar, let's say about, um, let's say about 23 percent of that one dollar goes into you, you know payroll taxes and all these regulations that they have to go through these hoops and hurdles. If you got rid of those and replaced it with let's say like a 23 percent sales tax, it should be pretty cost neutral. But the thing is, even though it's kind of cost neutral um, for people pay, paying at the uh, stores and things like that, is that um, the, the amount of regulation and red tape that it will reduce will make it uh, oh, oh, less. Well, of course. Yeah, it'll of course make it a will. lot better. But, I, but that 20 and 30 percent that I keep hearing flop around, I don't believe that at all. I believe probably you could we could do a 10 or 12 percent okay. if the money was done properly and not wasted. A 10 percent. I mean, how much of a boom would that be to the economy? Imagine we're the only country in the entire almost world, or at least industrialized world. I mean, that like, let's say we announced, all right, world, uh, you know, businesses, people, inventors across America, etc. Here's a country um, that has a constitution with guaranteed rights, but we also we don't have an income tax. Uh, we don't have uh, income tax. So, I mean, don't you think we would have a like we'd have an immigration of businesses coming to our shores? Well, and, really. and with and with the reduction of regulations and bringing those prices down, a lot of the companies that were basically forced out of this country due to what they call competitive reasons, which I don't buy all the time, but they've gone overseas because the regulations are, are so involved and so expensive, they can't do business here anymore, and they move it over there. So let's get rid of that. Get it back here. Use some logic. Yeah, like Gary know. Johnson has said, and people might not have heard of him, but he's libertarian running for president. He said if a 0% corporate or income tax rate doesn't, you, you, you know, create tens of millions of new jobs, I don't know what will. I, I mean, there. Oh. if that doesn't, then, 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 then I, yeah, exactly, I don't know what else would either. I mean, that would be amazing, and they would have no more payroll taxes because of Social Security and all that would be put into this, uh, you know, fair tax. Um, I mean, and, and a lot of people would be paying, like illegal immigrants, they can't avoid a sales tax. Um, oh, you know, I do want to touch on that. Subject. And actually, a, a lot of rich people that, that have a lower tax rate, they, they would probably, the, the very rich, and the, you know, illegal immigrants and stuff like that, they would actually, um, you know, pay their fair share. Do you, have a, do you have any idea how many regulations are out there, federal regulations for businesses today? Oh, they, I, I, I have a small business myself, and yes, I mean, I wish I could just start a business, and the only thing I'd have to collect is sales tax. I mean, if that well, was the it, I mean, th then, you know, it would be a, it'd be great. I know all these papers I have to fill out, how much I have to pay, like a, like a tax attorney, because I'm too scared to fill out my own taxes, because I don't want to get audited, having that, like, little fear in the back of my mind every single right. like, once a well, year. Well, I have the greatest accountant in the world. She's, she's very brilliant, but she'll tell you, it's just, it's mind-boggling. And then the system, you have to have that. You really do. You know, people go online and go, oh, I did it myself. And well, that's great. But uh, with, the, with the federal government in charge, I don't trust any of those things. Well, I, I do want to talk about illegal immigrants, Ill, illegal criminals, basically. Uh, one, and, I, and you let me know when, when you yeah, want to cover yeah, that. Yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah. Well, what, there, were, there were a couple things that happened in the last year that infuriated me and it came from the White House. One of them is unrelated to this, but I'm going to get it out because I think it's important. I don't understand how we could possibly put two Navy SEALs and on trial and court-martialed, although found not guilty, but were fully court-martialed for giving one of the top al-Qaeda terrorists a bloody lip during his capture. That's atrocious. The commander-in-chief ought to be ashamed of himself. That is absolutely horrible. Jeez, at the, the main same one time, was, he's sending drones himself like uh, yeah. and, and, and knocking people out and passing laws like the NDAA where not only can he give you a bloody lip but they can take you and um, and, and, and and these are laws that have been refined over the last um, 500 or a thousand years where we're, we're American citizens are supposed to know their um, accusers uh, the, the charges against them have a well, trial right. of their jury um, and, and etc I mean the whole due process not posse comitatus not letting the military um, police uh, you, you know I guess the homeland um, and uh, he passed you, you, you know of that course. with those two provisions in the NDAA where they can pretty much indefinitely de well they can de indefinitely detain you it's going through the court systems right now absolutely now that, now let me tell you the second one that really really got my attention the first one was just heartbreaking. This one really is more of an anger issue with me. Uh, we were talking about if somebody was brought here from another country, and everybody says when we talk about immigration, we're talking about Mexicans. That's not true. It's everybody. I don't care what it is. And I think my immigration idea for an immigration policy is the absolute best. 
and it's on the website if you like. Basically, it is all anyone here that has stopped and found to be illegal, whatever country they're from, I don't care where it is. Whatever their immigration laws will apply to them immediately, and all of them are much stricter than ours. So their the problem is really basically solved at that point. No longer can we be the bad guy. We're not fair. But a comment was made. And I'm going to do the best I can to quote the president on this. This was in regards to anybody here that was brought here under the age of 18 will be given an extended visa to stay as long as they don't have a criminal background, which they found out. Oh well, we're going to have to figure out how to adjust that. For how we're going to how we're going to take some of these felony charges and maybe reduce them to misdemeanors so they don't count in it. But we won't count misdemeanors. That's a bad program. But the comment was made. These people have already pledged their allegiance to this country. That's a quote. I sat straight up. I said, wait a minute. That means that these people are, if they pledge their allegiance to the United States, then they're already in the system to become legal. Well, no, it's not that. But their being here is pledging their allegiance, and I totally disagree with that. That is not pledging your allegiance to the United States. Or they'd have an American flag in front of their house instead of flag of their nation and trying to figure out how to always get more people to come in and do things illegally. We're so, so people, now, what about the, like the people that are over 18 but that have been in this country 18 years that might have an American flag? Like, do you think they should at least get some kind of work visa so they could stay yeah. until like they? As long as their record is, is clean, they haven't broken right. the law, and they. Now I'm talking any. Now I'm not talking about speeding. I'm talking about they haven't been involved in what we all would consider a real a crime with a victim. I mean, speeding, yeah, parking right, ticket, you know, I mean, that's kind of silly, but yeah. It's, yeah. Well, somebody, but somebody here with three DUIs is from another country needs to go back home. Oh, yeah, yeah. If they have any <laughs> kind of, yeah, absolutely. DUI is not right. the same thing as a parking but, but, ticket. Let's take that example that you gave, though. Here's somebody that's uh, been here 15 years after they were 18. They've had 15 years to get involved in the system to become legal, to apply for citizenship. Now, I know several that have done it. I, I've actually, a very good friend of mine did it, and, he, and he's very proud of it. He's very angry that other people don't do it, which is great. But how did they pledge their allegiance if they're not in the system they haven't applied for? I, I'm all for staying and working and paying taxes and doing the, the, what everybody else does and hopefully contribute to the cause. And if we had a sales tax, I mean, they, they wouldn't be able pay. to help pay for it. Yeah. One, one of the things people don't understand is the national defense budget. All of the money spent in the military comes from income tax. It does not come from any sales tax. So people that don't pay income tax are riding that pony free, and that's not gonna work. What about people that serve in the military who are from other countries, like either from Canada or Mexico? I mean, do you think they should get like a faster path to citizenship or something? Absolutely. If they've been in the military, uh, I would say if they've done a, a four year stay in the military, I have no problem with them, their application going in, and it should get, it should get an immediate look. Also someone that has worked the entire time. <laughs> But if, they, if, if any of those particular people are on the, our current welfare system, or so any of those other I think things, what you're saying is common sense. It's absolutely fair. I mean, you were talking about people. You have you know a, a special category for people 18 under if they're 18 older, as long as they're not criminals, and, and they, you know, they're showing that they want to be Americans. They're in the military. I mean, and, and now if they commit, like, hard crimes, yeah, let's get them out of here and, and they're not yeah, don't put them in. Don't incarcerate them in our jails under our dime again. Let's get, uh, let's get these people out. Yeah. I, spend a, I spend an awful lot of time in, in places in Mexico that you do not want to go. Trust me, you really, really don't. Yeah. And they're very rough. They're 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 not in the same century. But now, now a lot of these uh, places might profit from them being in, in our prisons. So I mean, let's just get them out anyways, even if it does, you know, profit. But, but also, we place. have to do something very important. We bring these troops home. Then a lot of them are not going to have anywhere to go. We really do need to lock the borders down in this country and be very very concerned about our own our own safety to our citizens of this country. So let's do that. It used to be called the National Guard. You guarded the nation. So let's get back to that and draw a line in the sand. We're not taking any more people in this country. We have 345 million people now. Yeah. It wasn't very long ago. I remember very well because it was on a MASH episode, one of my favorite old shows, mm -hmm. where Colonel Potter reads a letter saying, my God, we have 100 million people. How are we ever going to handle this? Wow. That's what, and now we have 350. That's, that's staggering. And, and you know, one of the questions that I know it's going to come up is Obamacare. Obamacare, I can't believe people are still talking about it. 
it's going they said this will give health care to 30 million people but we have over 330 million yeah it's not going to help small business owners like uh, oh, 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 oh no like, like, like myself who would prefer catastrophic insurance um but uh, so public care is going to force you to get they can... full full they're going to first you get full coverage which is about you know a couple thousand dollars difference in price but shame on some of these companies also that have come along and said okay i'll tell you what i'm going to do i'm going to take all that benefit away Okay, take my benefits away. My, I don't know if my company's going to do it or not. I would guess absolutely. That's just the way they are. But I would guess that if they were to do that, then my pay would go up for whatever amount that they determine that they spend on me a year. Correct? Oh, no, no. We're not, we're not going to give you any money to go do your own. We're just going to eliminate it. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. back. You know, one of the – you probably may not agree with this, but give us some thought. Somebody had a super genius when they decided that, you know, have a pay stub. You had direct deposit. Nobody reads all the things that come out of your check anymore. It goes in, they go to work, they go to their sex job, they're hustling, they're trying to make their ends meet. They don't even read it because you, there's nothing you can do about it. But it's an astronomical list. Take all your bills, your cell phone bills. Half your cell phone bills, regulations, and taxes. I saw a tent yesterday. Another two of them in my town. Phone stop here. Okay, I'll stop. I want a free cell phone. I'm sorry, you don't qualify. He didn't even ask me a question. He didn't even, <laughs> he just looked at me and went, you don't qualify. What's that mean? Yeah. How does that work? I heard about the free cell phone deal. Like like a part of our universal access fee or something like that is charged on each cell phone bill. And right now it's going to give poor people free cell phones, basically. And, um, and, and, and I guess that's a good intention. But some people are, um, you, you know, getting like five cell phones and, and uh, they're just... Well, let's do this. If we're going to give cell phones out for safety, and I, 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 in this day and age, I'm not so sure that's not a, a, anything but a good idea. But it's limited to calling nine one one. You don't get to sit home. You don't get to sit home and not look for work and not and not contribute to anything and and sit back and you know use all these minutes and I think it's cost a couple bucks, two hundred fifty minutes and we were just paying through the nose for all these free programs. People are losing their homes. People are really really in trouble right now. A lot more than anybody wants to talk about, and it's wrong. Yeah, a lot of it's because, uh, I mean, the, the, the economy, because of the bailouts, because we keep picking winners and losers in this economy, and um, instead of bailing, we're, we're bailing out the people who have failed, a like, if you looked at the stock market, I mean, you're trying to pick stocks, and, and you find companies that um, are totally out of balance on the, the, the sheets and, and stuff like that, who've been in debt for, like, the last, you, you know, 30 years, and, um, I mean, the only reason people invest in these companies is because they know they're going to get bailed out but if they knew they weren't going to get bailed out i mean you know you, you know like like their stocks did tumble down um they should be out of business and they should be uh bought up um kind of trust busted by the free markets uh, and let smaller mid-sized business buy up the pieces of them and oh, I, take I'm over all about those smaller loans. smaller businesses is the future I, make it corporations i understand that things get bigger and they always have to show growth and if they don't people lose their job and oh my god we gotta we gotta satisfy all the stockholders we really don't have any stake in it other than they're just trying to make money, which is fine. Trading is trading. I'm not against that. That's that's just part of our system. But here's here's one of the things about the bailout. General Motors, people still say, well, it kept, I, I had a young man the other day. He's got a master's degree, told me. Well, it kept him out of bankruptcy. Man, I hated to do this to him. No, they did. They, they, they filed bankruptcy. They're in bankruptcy. And we still leave them tons of money that has not been paid back. Because the main reason, and I remember the president talking about this, we have workers in Detroit that have been laid off for 11 months, and they need to come back to work. 11 months. It's a long time. We all agree. Did you know that there's thousands of airline pilots that were laid off after 9-11? Haven't been called back to their business yet. Right, right. It's picking a and certain sectors of the market, and GM supposedly is um, putting up shop in, like, uh, Mexico and China. Oh, no, you... no, no, no. Wait a minute. I've been to the auto plants in Mexico. I'll be more, I, I, I've actually been to them. It, they're huge. So if you're doing that and you're getting the labor free and you still can't make money and pay your debt back, the business model's wrong. And the only way they're going to learn is if they don't get free money. They should only get money from people who voluntarily give it to them. Um, that would be, you know, through... Uh, uh, 
<laughs> us, yeah. And, and what does that do to Ford? I mean, I guess like Ford, who didn't request the bailout money, um, they they have now have to compete against um, two companies um, that uh, receive bailouts. Like if I went to like someone's local neighborhood and um, and there was uh, like a strip mall, let's say, and, and let's say half of them uh, kept failing, kept going out of business because they didn't know how to and because no one wanted their products so i went to the other uh f you know five companies that kept on doing good and said all right so give me 10 percent of your income i'm going to give it to the other failing companies who are your direct competitors i mean if you that's keep a, doing that that's a recipe that's, for disaster that's a that's a great incentive plan isn't it yeah to fail yeah exactly right yeah, I, but why don't fact, I, just I know fail. i'm going to be okay at the end of the year because my check's coming that's not going to work I, you know I, I one of the things about gm that really got me is you know the, the chevy bolts a disaster absolute disaster the the concept it's a hybrid car it's not an electric car i had a guy yesterday said no oh, no there's no gas in the car I said, yes there is it's a hybrid there's only one or two electric cars out there and they're and they're, they're not very popular it's just too hard to charge them we will get to the point where we can do that and that'll be great that'll be progress private enterprise and through technology but the vote now, since we can't sell any of them to the public because they're astronomically expensive and they're really not very good and they've got a lot of problems, what we're going to do is, is we're going to sell them to the government. You need to see what the GM sales just to the government for government vehicles was. That's why their numbers are up. Otherwise, they're done. There's no way they can survive. So you're Ford. You and I run a Ford Motor Company. we got to compete against this. And, and what well, most of your cars are, are going to be purchased. They'll all be GM products for the government. That's automatic. It's automatic free money. Just keep pumping them out. Yeah, it's I, insanity. It's pure insanity. Yeah, it, it's really hurting. I mean, and we're doing it in tons of different uh, m markets, whether it's uh, farming or uh, you know automotive. Um, and and who gets to uh, pick pick the winners and losers? I mean, so you would vote against Obamacare, though. I mean, getting back to that for a second. I, I sure, we, let's talk about it. Yeah. Uh, now, what do you think we should have instead uh, instead of Obamacare? I think, well, first of all, what we need to do is, if we want to be fair, and everybody wants to use that word, so I'm going to go ahead and use it. They want to use it when it's convenient. Let's be fair. Why do we not have the same health care plan as the, as members of Congress? They have wonderful plans. Well, yeah, but we don't have to pay for them. You guys pay for them. Well, let's hang on a minute. I believe that if everybody, and this isn't the most popular view, but you've got to stick with something. Here's the deal. If everybody had to pay in, from the time they're born, and that means that when somebody has a child, they're responsible for that amount of money every month. If it were $100 for every single person breathing on this planet a month, that's that's very small to what it is today if you went and bought it. And the reason it's so high is we've got everybody's fingers in the very, way too much insurance. The insurance companies are, are, are running the health care plan, doctors aren't. When you get the doctors back, allowing them to run their business the way they need to run their business. Doctors aren't out there make 20 million dollars a year so you think but a public to, option kind of like what the congress gets to pick um would be a way to go i i wouldn't necessarily disagree with that i mean i think um that's better than what but, we have but, now it's more fair the cost of it, let's, say that, let's, let's say that somebody that makes a hundred thousand dollars has to pay 150 dollars a month per person for health care right now they're probably if you if you knew exactly what it was costing them it's probably more like five or six hundred but if everybody had to do it that's part of your responsibility it's it's something you can't get out of you have to do it. Right. I, so I think do it would think be amazing. Everybody would say, well, am I going to get 100 a month? I, I don't know, but I'm not going to pay 300 a month for you to have it while you're not pitching in and I'm paying for two. That's one of the biggest problems now is I'm supposed to, and it happens with pensions also. Okay, we take your pension away. You don't have a pension at your job, which I do not. But you have to pay into this fund that pays back people that lost their pension, and you need to build your own. So I'm paying for two if I want to have one. Well, I can't afford to, so I'm paying for theirs, and I get nothing, and that's not going to work. We, you know, in this fair society, supposedly, that's the way it works. We can make, get doctors involved. We need a panel of really smart doctors. I have several in mind. Sit down. What is the best way to do this? What's your biggest hurdle in keeping your practice alive and keeping it double and, and, and running it on track where everybody's employed and everybody's doing a good job and have good health care? Insurance companies are killing us. We have half our staff just to deal with the insurance company. 
Yeah, and we bailed a lot of insurance companies out also during the bailouts, like AIG, and um, and a lot of these banks are involved with the insurance companies or heavily invested in them. So sure, they are. They're the biggest money in the world. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, now what if you're like you know, like um, you know, Amish and don't want any health care or or just prefer you know just using like local services or or whatever. I mean, there's people that are interested in alternative medicine too who might not want. To, um, well, you know, that's a, that's a subject that I haven't given a lot of thought to. Uh oh, yeah. wait a minute, that's an honest answer. I don't know. Uh, I don't know exactly how the Amish would percent would be that way. I mean, Amish never used to fly us on airplanes now. Okay, so things have changed a little bit. <laughs> if you say I don't want to do that, I don't want in that. Okay, would would they have been exempted if Obamacare were, were to be in place? And if you read Obamacare at the end of it, there's some things in there that ought to scare you to death of who actually is exempt. Right. There are certain religious beliefs that, oh, they're exempt from having to pay for insurance because it's considered a form of gambling. Well, you know what? We can all do that, but everybody's just going to turn around and say, well, then I'm one of those now. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> That's the yeah. thing I've ever I, I mean, it's, 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 it's really silly. And, uh, the, well, it's not. It doesn't have any common sense. It doesn't have any roots to it. Why don't we sit down, throw this thing in the trash? It's 2,800 pages. The Speaker of the House said, well, we need to pass it so we can see what's in it. That's despicable. The president said, I'd never sign it unless I read it. Did you read it? On, I don't know, on the 17th T, I guess. But no, I don't, I don't believe that happened at all. Throw it away. If it's more than 50 pages, it probably isn't going to work. It's too complicated. Why yeah. can't we all have the same plan? And I do believe it needs to be somewhat of a catastrophe plan because yeah. if you don't, you're going to have every time somebody wakes up and has a sniffle or their ears a little bit sore. Right, right. You have some kind of deductible that, that would prevent people from, um, like, you know, using it for every single kind of sniffle, like you said. I mean, it has to have some kind of deductible where someone's not going to go for every, like, little thing. Um, well, and it doesn't have to be an astronomical deductible. Right. It could be 50 bucks. Right, right. You're just totally just something that would prevent that kind of – I agree with you totally. I mean, and I also think yeah. that some things to do – my doctor uh, – I'm going to say his name because he's an absolutely fabulous physician. Dr. Cox would tell you in a minute, if you've got something going on, you don't necessarily have to come in here. Tell me what it is. You think you've got an idea what's going on. Call me and we'll take care of it. We can do some things over the phone. Maybe you just need a script for ears or, you know, my ears are always messed up. You're up and down too much. So – do you think we should be able to buy prescription drugs from uh, Canada? I think that if we would solve our regulation problem, we don't need to think about going that route. We're already figuring out an alternative way to go around something instead of fixing the problem that makes people want to go there in the first place. Right, right. I... <laughs> we don't need to go to Canada. People in Canada, I have another dear friend of mine, a great, great guy in the lodge business. Also, He's Canadian, wonderful man. He and his wife are spectacular people. and They're just amazing. And... They'll tell you, oh, you come here to get your health care. We have more MRI machines in Tulsa, Oklahoma than they have in Canada. I know somebody that recently was told, okay, well, you, you do have a situation. This Canadian resident, she lives here. She said, they told me that I could come in in six months. Now, how many, and we've all heard on the news where somebody, especially head of state or somebody in the government of Canada, they rushed, over, they rushed over the border to the United States to get this taken care of. Yeah, we, we, we do have, like, the best te technological um, medicine, and that's probably because of the free market. I mean, now, we do spend about, you know, 25% or 20% of our GDP on health care costs more than any other country. But, yeah, uh, but, but, but don't forget why. We're $300 billion plus. <laughs> We're going to spend a lot of money. Everybody's going to have it. those things. Those All the ailments that we used to have when we were a smaller country by population – I mean, right now we have, I'm not picking on anybody. I, I don't ever want to pick on any group. No, so don't anybody out there misunderstand. Diabetes, obesity, all these things are going on. Everybody's talking about how bad we are in that situation. So there drives your health care costs up. Okay, what about this problem? That drives your health care up. So many things are. No, that's a huge factor, what, what we eat. I mean, people eat <sighs> sugar like, um, like, like they're sugar ants. And, uh, uh, I haven't that's... had a pop in 20 years, a pop, soda, whatever you want. It depends on where you were born. Yeah. I just don't. I, I, no, I quit that about 10 years ago myself. I, I mean, I, 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 I used to it. drink like a 12-pack a week, but like 10 years ago, I said enough's enough. I drink water and, and sometimes grapefruit juice now. But uh, I mean, but that's... Drinking some tea yeah. right now as I talk to you. So. 
Yeah, yeah. Legacy and some hot And who water. knows what kind of technologies we're going to have in the next 10 years. I mean, right now we're, we're looking into DNA and all these kind of things. I mean, in 20 years from now, I mean, our health care, it might not even be an insurance-based type of thing that we even need. And, and so we, we don't want to, like, invest too much in the, 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 you know, the horse and buggy, you know, when there could be other things coming along, you know. Well, you know, we, you know I, I don't know how old you are. I'm 54, if anybody needs to know. I, a young 54 at that. The uh, we all watched Star Trek years ago, and they had all these little sensors, and they stick this thing up, and it's your temperature. We have some of that now. I I actually got to uh, play with the cyber knife at the local hospital, St. John's. Here, I got to play with uh, on a display where you actually go in and take a knife, and you know you cut the grape and move it here, and that's something that's done on somebody thousands of miles away. And people don't shop around, like, when they go into the hospital. Like, you go in the dentist or, or the, the, the doctors, they tell you the bill afterwards. I mean, it's the only place where they tell you the bill afterwards. Um, there's well, no, like, the airlines place. are the only ones held to buy the minute. Also, if you're one minute late out of the gate, you're a horrible human being. But if you get there 15 early, you're still late. So there's a lot of insanity in that department. But uh, the $100 aspirin, uh, another friend of mine and I had this conversation the other day. The $100 aspirin. That aspirin probably does cost 100 You've got a bank of lawyers. You've got over half your administration in a hospital is just handling paperwork for billing. Yeah. Administrative costs. We didn't, there's a bigger problem with health care than anybody really wants to talk about. If you're going to tell doctors, just like you have airline pilots, you're not going to make any money in this business in the future. It's just not there. We can afford it and still give our product away at this particular price. And with all the problems that we have surrounding our business, you're not going to make any money. Who's going to go through all of that? to make fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year. Yeah, no, that's, that's true. And here's another kind of similar thing, although a little bit different, is I heard w w one person talk about a um, way we could help doctors um, – like in some of the poor hospitals uh, that, that don't want to go to places like that is kind of like the military. Have them um, give them a, a, a paid for education as long as they serve like, you know, four to six or eight years in, in one of these hospitals. And after that, they can go to private practice or do whatever they want to do. And that well, and, and maybe you just hit on a, a, something popped in my head when you think maybe this is a great thing to build on this idea also. We have a lot of foundations out there, wounded warriors, um, Oh, there's just so many of them. Uh, Dan Rooney, uh, Major Dan Rooney here in Tulsa runs a great, great, great foundation and taking care of and scholarships for soldiers and families and doing all these wonderful things. These things are absolutely fabulous programs. The thing that I don't understand about them is, though, why do we have to have them? We have to have them because we have a big heart. We're going to take care of these people no matter what. But these people have already done everything they should have to do. We should be taking care of it on our own, but we're too busy throwing money away Maybe right, right. You're, you're talking about medicine. the root of the problem. Yeah, yeah. Get to the root. Like, why do we have to have that in the first place? That's a great. And, and nobody great have to misunderstand. I'm, I think those programs are absolutely the most wonderful thing in the world. I, I watched. Uh, I watched uh, one of their. Oh, what do you want to call it? I watched it uh, halftime at a basketball game the other day, where they gave away a scholarship to this this gentleman who had lost his legs, and his kids were there, and they're taken care of. That's great. One of the other things I think the other countries need to do, and I don't know why any president doesn't bring this up more, we're the only country in the world that donates money to charities and do the things that we do privately over here. It's unbelievable. And that's all my, that's already been taxed probably four times. Which brings me to another point, this inheritance tax. If your family has, you, you, you acquire wealth and you leave it to somebody, it's been taxed a dozen times by now. And we're going to take some more of it just as soon as, you, just as, soon as you're no longer on this earth. So, That's not right. So you can't imagine, can you imagine in any situation, like, so, so against a Republican opponent here, um, like, how, how, how are you, like, we'll go through both of them, but we'll start with the Republican. How are you, um, as far as people who might typically vote Republican, conservative, libertarian, whatever, how are you better um, than the Republican uh, opponent? I see here, like, uh, basically dollars and cents, and uh, I, I don't see you raising any taxes, if anything. You'd oh, be, heavens no. Uh, we, we, we could cut taxes drastically, but we have to get rid of the waste. And everybody says, well, how are you going to do it? I hear it all the time. How are you going to do that? Get in there and work. Seven days a week, whatever it takes. This is a real serious job. This isn't something to just go, oh, I'm going to go get this job. I'm going to have a title. I don't care. Don't put a plaque on the door. We're going to work. 
we got to get rid of these things and expose them and get rid of them and make people that push these things that are throwing your money away, hold them accountable. They need to be fired. Yeah, there's I tons of groups that, that list, like, all the waste, um, you, you know, project oh, for Tom government Hogan's accountability. Uh, oh. you, you know, there's tons of uh, companies like that. Uh, I mean, organizations, nonprofit organizations, even the, you know, Congressional Budget Office. Um, Senator Colburn, has, he was just on the other day on the news from Oklahoma. He, tell, he has a book, the Waste Book, and it tells in there, just get a copy of it and read it. It's absolutely unbelievable. Who did this? Well, these people over here did it, but we don't want to say because I guess that's not nice or we don't want anybody to think badly of them or somebody may turn around and want to say, well, that's not politically correct, which is something else we've got to stop in this country. We politically corrected ourselves into we're the only ones that are offended. And I'm tired of it. And, and really, really tired. Now against the Democrats, on the Democrat opponents, um, I, yeah, I mean, I, how, how would I you would. be a, like appeal to those vote that voting block? Well, I, what, I, what, I, what I would say for both of those for both parties is, I don't have any ties. I don't have a party telling me, okay, this is what we have in mind. This is what we need you to go on board with this. It's one thing to negotiate, and you'll have independents they need on board. They're always looking for the independent to be the deal breaker or the deal maker. Okay? But they already have an agenda. So if you don't have their agenda, then they're not going to help you, and you won't stay in office and they're out of power, which brings a bigger problem is, do we or do we not need term limits? Now, I've been against term limits my whole life because I believe term limits are called elections. Right, exactly. We can have a term limit this 2012, November 6th, if people want it. Um, well, but, but, but a thing called the election should have been the term limit, and all of a sudden you turn around and you got a guy like Joe Biden who's been in there 40 years. Yeah. And they say, and somebody asked this question in a, in a forum recently, they said, you guys, one of you guys are going to Congress, obviously, uh, you're going to be the junior congressman. No, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. So now we've already, you've already said you're going to be the junior guy, so don't expect to come in here with any fresh ideas because we're going to tell you which way to go because we have two parties. Republican right, attack. right, and they control who gets on the committees and stuff Everything. like that. If, if you're independent, they're going to try to force you to um, be on the, the Republican or, or the Democrat kind of a caucus or whatever they call it. So, um, but, so, but those people yeah. that are making that decision have been there their whole life. They're career politicians, and I think it's a service you do. It would be, I Two terms. Of any office is all that should ever be, and that includes the Supreme Court. This being on the Supreme Court for life is the most dangerous thing we can ever have. Well, one thing about that is because that way, supposedly, you know, they can't be bought off or, or you, you know, um, which, you know, you could argue that some of them are anyways. But <laughs> but, but, but supposedly the, 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 the lifetime things, like, kind of gives them an, a, a, an essence of, like, hey, you know, I can't be corrupted because I don't have to worry about elections or, you know, doing that campaign cycle for the Supreme Court I'm talking about. I mean, I'm not corruptible. That's one of the all, all the uh, closest acquaintances and friends will tell you. I think it'd be pretty hard. It'd be almost, it would be impossible to get this guy. Yeah, and so it's people say everyone has a price, and, and what you're saying is the Constitution's not for sale, basically. Absolutely. That, this country's yeah. not for sale, but we're giving it away. We're not even selling it. Yeah, that, that's right. And a lot of these people who do sell out, they sell out for so cheap, it's 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 crazy. I mean, they might get a $1,000 contribution from, like, Goldman Sachs or something, give them the whole world. Um, and uh, not that they should even for all the money in the world, but but uh, they, they yeah, I guess if you sell out, you sell out almost most for any price um, and uh, so another well, thing you have here is hold uh, uh, I'm sorry well you can continue that thought I also liked your 17th point here on your website hold media accountable when early and incomplete information turns out to be false oh my goodness we can get dozens of them. we haven't had that much time this is a Richard Jewell man. yeah oh oh my goodness poor guy really you're talking about the Atlanta bomber yeah Oh, see, I remember. Well, he wasn't the bomber. Was, uh, I mean, the, I know, the I know. accused Atlanta bomber. Yeah. Yeah, and and we and every and I'm, everybody at the time turned around and went, "Can you believe this guy?" I'm like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! He finds this thing. Are you sure he? Oh, come on! It's obvious. They've given you all the information you need. No, it's not all the information I need. But you're cattle. You're just going to follow what they tell you. Okay, we found out that was wrong. Moving on. Yeah, and they, they put it the retraction on like the tenth page, like or you don't know, even a put month one later. Out. Yeah. Or come out and say, you know what, we really blew it. Here, I'll tell you, a news station, whatever wants to be successful, come out once in a while and go, we blew it. We missed that by a mile. A, a Trayvon Martin case, horribly handled. It was a trial by media. And we find out all these things since about somebody's character and what they're really doing on, and the picture's not accurate, and this isn't right, and that, I mean... 
There's no. so many instances, and, and, and one of the most horrible things is uh, telling the public that there's only a Republican and a Democrat running for Congress. There is actually, I mean, right now, there's a 10%, according to the Gallup poll, August 24th, when they polled it, uh, 2012, a 10% approval rating in Congress. They also had another 10% in, in I think it's a little high. February, March. It might, that might be a little, the media has about like a less than a 20% approval rating. And right now, the highest voting um, block in this country are independents. So, I, I, I mean, that, that could almost be slanders, right? They're not Thomas well, uh, Jefferson said we need an informed and educated public in order to have a democracy, and, and I mean, that's just common sense. How could we not? I mean, you know, and uh, it seems, and like you said, the, trying to find out anything that's going on in the government, I mean, it seems like they want to meddle in every single aspect of our life, like everything. you said. But but when we try to find out what's going on with our own government, um, which is supposed to be open and democratic, and uh, we and can't find hardly any, and transparent, um, I don't see much transparency there, just a fog of uh, smoke filled rooms it's unbelievable i i held the media accountable when they make a mistake it's absolutely vital and they and they need to i would like to see the news come on like it used to be you had the world news for the first 30 minutes and you had local news the last 30 and we went right to johnny carson okay it was great <laughs> and and everybody went to bed got up in the morning and it was fine now we have it 24 7 way to go ted turner good idea for the money but bad idea for the country we get news 24 7 and even if it's wrong we're going to shove it down your throat. Now, you can turn it off, granted, and a lot of people have. That's where your 20% comes in of, of approval for the media. And I don't believe Congress has a 10% approval rating. I remember when it was two or three. Now, no. here's something that being an independent, I, I, I mean, it, it, it does – just one thing you could say about it is that, um, you, you know, you are here to break the paradigm. You're more interested in, in the United States than in party politics. Um, uh, it, some other things real quick just to run, run through here. Encourage purchase of products made in America. Introduce, uh, re introduce the WPA, um, which is kind of like a New Deal thing, I, I think, and uh, mandatory drug testing of all government-assisted programs. Now, those three things, I mean, I, I wouldn't disagree with that just as long as, you, you know, it's mandatory drug testing for all the bailout companies and, and, and big banks and, 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 you know, these companies that get these no-bid contracts or even oh, bid contracts as oh, well. I'm just covering those that are on those, on those programs first. There's nobody. There's nobody. I promise you, if you drug tested everybody in this country, the unemployment rate would go, to the, would go through the roof. Yeah, yeah, and and I bet I mean I, I I'm sure some of these people that are in Goldman Sachs and and look, these companies getting bailed out. I'm sure they would probably fail some of these drug oh. tests as well because. So I mean, why don't we have those? Yeah, I mean because some of the decisions they're making, you know, you have to be on drugs to to, to, to even do them. And uh, that or you got a screw loose. But it's and that kind of brings a fairness factor too. So it's like you're not just picking on poor people or whatever, you know. No, I'm not. Um, poor people don't have money to buy drugs. They steal they from don't. everybody and and do everything they can illegally to go buy drugs and then their life just gets worse and worse and all we do is make it perpetual so here's what we need to do the WPA program this is a great program we still have armory buildings and, and stone buildings all over this country and roads that were built that are just absolutely still there and it's very sound very good very good program but people learn skills by doing that now if you're just gonna let and, and, and I understand welfare was passed earlier this summer it's unlimited now and you don't have to look for a job now my program you're gonna come in you're gonna work four days a week. The fifth day, you pick Monday your front to go and look for private employment somewhere. Or you can not, but that's the only way you're going to get off of this. But you're only you're already being paid, whatever your welfare check is. That's your pay. But we have a lot of things to do. Now, should they make at least minimum wage, do you think? Or um, they might have to get paid a little bit more if they're doing that? Well, well, you can't do it that way because probably they're already living for anyway. They're getting free cell phones. They're getting free housing. People that are long-term welfare aren't paying anything anyway. I don't know what it would come to by the hour, but you have to go to work. Well, maybe you learn a skill. Maybe you learn how to weld. Maybe you learn how to be a fitter. Maybe you learn how to garden. Well, that would be I good if, if, if they're actually learning real skills like welding and stuff like that, that. That that would be pretty good too. So that could be, you know, the education could be part of the pay as part of that as well if they're learning. I'll tell you what, if you do enough crappy jobs long enough, you'll you will figure out. I need to do something different, or I'm going to be stuck in this forever. Mm. 
so I, I just think that there's a there's got to be a better way than the system we have now. No, I think that's a great idea, especially if you throw in some education of learning a well, like sure. a, a good skill with it. Uh, I mean, not just like learning how to make burgers at McDonald's or whatever, but if you're learning like an actual skill like plumbing or welding or electrician or, or, or just anything and tons of different things, then that, that well, would be uh, excellent. I mean, even you may if, not even be doing what it is that your trade will be, but you that, that, that's open, right. But but that. but just knowing that skill will make you you know more self confident. And and you you know you, it'll just make you a better person basically. Of course it will. Yeah. And, 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 and you have skin in the game, which is a, everything to me. You have skin in the game, you'll care. You know, I tried to explain it to somebody the other day. They didn't get it. It's a shame. Do you take care of your car or the rent a car better? You ever wash and wipe the rent a car? <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> and you're uh, not going to take care of things, especially free housing, all these things, unless you're actually paying for it. I'm walking around in my place right now because I pay it this thing every month. I'm proud of it, and it's in perfect order for a reason. You know, the, the, you learn these things, though, but it's going to cost me more to not take care of something. And you, all of a sudden, you're taking care of things, and you'll start taking care of your life. If you can't have six or eight kids, you're going to go, you know what, I may not be able to have any, but I'd like to have one or two, which you're going to see the huge... Yeah. No, I think that, that, that's a great idea. I mean, as long as if it's not just like meaningless stuff like picking up litter or whatever, but if everyone gets no. an equal chance to learn like um, like like some real skill, uh, then then that that that's uh, terrific. Um, yeah, they'll on bring up their on my, on, my, on my father's farm, he puts an ad in the paper. He he stopped doing it. We went to round bales. He put an ad in the paper. He's paying twenty five dollars an hour cash to bale hay. I bailed millions of bales growing up. I know all about it. I've been on the wrong end of a chainsaw for a lot of years, too, because I did that business. There's nothing wrong with manual labor. Don't look down on it. That's one of the reasons our education problem is where it is today, because everybody said, I want my kid to have this degree. Not everybody needs to have a degree to be successful. Yeah. But if everybody does that, nobody knows how to do the other. And, oh, I don't want anybody to know my kid's out here doing this. Well, that's really sad. That's really, really sad. I, I, I hear what you're saying, and we need, I, you know, good ideas like that in there. Now, preserve Oklahoma's oil and gas heritage. Absolutely. Um, I would, now, is fracking in also an issue besides oil and gas in there, or what do you think I have, about that? My, my, my closest friend is an oil and gas CEO. I have sat down with him his, and other people in that business, and many geologists will tell you fracking is a very deep thing. Fracking is... The, the junk science that's out there saying fracking is no good don't have anything to base that on. I'm not worried about fracking messing up our water. You want to worry about water? 350 million people. We don't have enough water. Water will be one of the biggest problems we have in the country in the very near future. I'm not talking 40 years from now. I'm talking five. Better start paying attention to it. But back to the oil and gas. We have to use the God-given natural resources of this earth until we can do something different. We haven't been on oil and gas our whole life, but we have a lot of gas. So why are we not running? Even is that a great idea? Let's run all, all the interstate trucks on natural gas. I don't, even even the truck guys will. Yeah, I can afford it. Then I can actually make a living. Well, none of that. We'll regulate that to where you can do that, and that's exactly what they've done. They made no incentive whatsoever. There's no reason our cars aren't on it now. I know a lot of UPS trucks are on it. I think it's probably some FedEx. I only leave them out. Somebody be offended. Look. There's other ways of doing things. We're going to have electric vehicles someday in our lifetime. As soon as they figure out how to charge a battery in a matter of minutes instead of hours, it's on. The game is on. Yeah, and I agree with you. I think there's a lot of things that could be uh, changed. And maybe if we actually let the free market work, um, it would That's the thing. I want it to come from the free market. But, yeah. You know, I don't have a problem giving a company a grant that's actually building something besides fake solar panels and saying, we are really on the verge of something. We can do this. Well, when it costs too much for oil, and, and then it, when, when it's price when when it's priced right, um, then then may, maybe we can. And, and instead of fighting these wars in Iraq over oil, um, we probably could have bought it from them uh, cheaper. And um, and it, even if the price does go up, it might really encourage us, incentivize us to, you know, get other kinds of energy. Uh, the only the only reason your gas at the pump right now is as high as it is, you got a you got a whole bunch of people saying it's supply and demand. Okay, you got a whole other people over here saying, "Oh, they're just we're just gouging everybody." That oh, Exxon's making billions of dollars, which is absolutely ridiculous. The way you return, they're they're not even in the game when it comes to that. If you're going to get that, just compare apples to apples, which is Apple Computer. Let's do that. That's staggering. 
it's unbelievable the amount of money they make, and it's almost all made in China, and everybody just thinks it's great, but if Exxon makes a tenth of that, or a hundredth of that, it's highway robbery, which is, that's the media again. Now, what do you think, I, now, talking about term limits, um, you, you mentioned... Well, before we go to term limits, yeah, go ahead. The, the, the reason gas is so high today is regulations and taxes. Regulations and taxes, and... and we pay more for bottled water than we do a gallon of gas, and nobody's complaining about that bottle of water. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I, it's... It, People need to wake up a little bit on this and, and understand that, that that tax on that gas is phenomenal. And the money that took to transport it and refine it and do all the things that come with it from the ground to your car is not a simple process. Yeah, it's not just the direct regulations that you see on paper. There's a lot of regulations behind that when, when you count, like, you, 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 you know, the, the regulations of having employees and, and, and things like that. I mean, there's oh, my, lots of regulations. Company, my, 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 my friend's company, he, he, they've got to have these special meters and all these things on every single thing now. All this, thousands, thousands of dollars more. And, and they all turn out to be, there's no reason for it other than somebody thought it would be a really good idea. And it's green. Everybody wants to think that, oh, okay, he said the word green, everything's going to be just fine. That's, that's right. A lot of these big companies are using that word green, you, you know, oh, yeah. uh, and they're getting on the, the bandwagon, so it's just a label. Um, and a lot, a lot of these companies, um, like I think a lot of the big companies uh, are hurting a lot of the smaller companies, um, like because a lot of the, the monopolies are who want these regulations, so they put themselves in these government uh, regulatory um, departments, and, and there's a lot of departments we probably should just get rid of, but, but that's another topic but kind of like we have term limits or we don't have term limits for congress but you're suggesting we should i mean no, there's no I, doubt about it i see there's a lot of conflict of interest also in people who aren't even elected uh, to to these offices like the president can appoint like um and it, it does have to get approved by congress a lot of times the you know these uh, czars and department heads of different um departments uh a lot of them it seems like they have a conflict of interest i mean should there be any laws against like regulating a company that um, um, you just got out of and you're probably going to get right back into after you retire um, and probably get a nice paycheck for changing the regulations. I mean, whether it's a f pharmaceutical industry or, or the energy department or the environmental protection agency, right. etc. cetera. I, I mean, there's cr people being fined like $20,000 a day for, you, you, you know, messing with like a pond on their property and stuff. But, but that's I besides... I saw there's a guy in jail for a long time now because they added dirt to his backyard to stop of something they've decided that they changed something with a duck going over some i mean that some of that stuff's just absolutely ridiculous hey do you hear about gibson guitars um earlier this year like uh I've been to their factory it's a neat place no what, what did they what, oh well, i know what you're talking in about in tennessee Boy. yeah they have a, a factory they're one of the few made in america you know guitar um companies they've been around right. forever um and they were rated like swat style um because of some kind of weird wood that they were using that was like from like some country that they, they didn't supposedly are supposed to get wood from but that country said it was actually okay it, it, it's just it, it shut them down for a couple of days and you know right but it was them. a regulation that did it the country selling the wood was happy or the people that are selling them that wood not necessarily the country was right. happy to do a, a free market Market trade. Right. Exactly. The government said we'll have none of that. And they, they, once again, yeah. they're in your lives all over. And so if you work for Gibson, but back to back to this, one of the things I did want to talk about, we talked about Made in America. I'm, I want everybody to really understand this is very important. Most everybody's turned this off by now because it's too long. But <laughs> here's, the, here's the thing: when Walmart started, those gentlemen that started, the, those two guys, one of them was a very good friend of mine, and. It said Made in America on the front of the store. That was how they were found, and that's how they started. Oh, it, it did. Well, I didn't know Walmart. It started out like that. Well, I'm 37, by the way, and, and so I've always thought of Walmart as a place where, you know, you buy stuff made in China or something. <laughs> Walmart started on the front of the store, Made in USA. That's actually what it said. Now, I, when I do go to places, I personally try to look for the label. Absolutely. Like, if I see a thing of Dixie dishes or other paper plates, and I see one made in China, one made in the U.S., I'll pay um, more. I'll pay more too. Um, absolutely. I do it every day. Yeah. Um, I. You can't do some things that way, but some things you can. But there's no reason to buy some things from another country. Hopefully, they're buying our products from another country, although not as, not as much as I think we should be allowed because of regulations again. But if we, got, if we had a fair tax, that would probably cure a lot of that as well. Oh, that'll cure a whole bunch of it. But Walmart actually was started. Now, going to, I don't want to, 
I'm not picking on Walmart either. I'll just call it any Mega Mart, any place that you can buy everything in one stop. Yeah, Kmart as well, or any, any lot, of tons of places. Target, I don't all know. of them. I'll yeah. tell you why. I want to go to Fred's over here who sells that. Maybe he sells 10 or 12 things. Maybe he has a clothing store. I'm going to go in there, and that's where I'm going to buy blue jeans or socks or boxers or whatever I want to do. I don't want to go to one place and do that. You're killing the American dream. You're killing the family value. Everybody now is going to have to work for the Mega Mart, the giant store, for very little money. They're going to basically live there. But, hey, you ought to just be glad you have a job. So should we have yeah. import taxes, or what, what do you think? Um, or or to, in order to have that Made in America label, they have to really be made in America? or I mean, Oh, I think the things that are made in America, they are. Yeah. I don't have a problem with the label saying assembled, but I don't want to get into more regulations on how it's done. Right. If you want to make woods or snow shovels or whatever, and they're made in America, you stick a made in America sign, I'll buy that every time. Most people will. Now, now, now we are kind of going over, and that's all right I once know. in a while because, uh, you know, we talked to someone interesting. <laughs> but um, th there's four things I want to just kind of rapidly go through with you here. Right, so the voters, not for myself so much, but for the voters in Oklahoma's first district, um, what about, uh, how do you feel about um, the, 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 I guess, the abortion debates? Abortion, you know what, that the abortion issue is going to have to be addressed in the Supreme Court sometime or another. It needs to be a state issue. That is an issue people need to work out basically for themselves. I've, I am single. I don't have children. I have never been involved in any, any emotions along with that. I think basically abortion should be allowed for rape and incest, especially especially those. Right. Um, and, and, and incest. Yeah. Life, I, I, you know, I, I think you should. I think that's probably right. But anytime it's used, and it's used a lot for birth control or it's just something to do, is absolutely awful, and I can't even imagine doing it. I think that the emotional right. scars that a person puts themselves through later outweigh everything involved with it. And, and, and with that, you know, there's a whole issue of DNA, like, and clones and, and stuff like that. Um, and so at least you're, you're not giving, like, a black and white answer. You're, you're saying that there could be different situations and different things. Well, which, sure, there's always. makes sense, yeah. But any diehard simple rule, if it doesn't have any flexibility to it, it's not going to work. Good point. Not every situation yeah. in the world is going to fit a perfect casted modal rule. Exactly. And that's one of the problems we have with laws is, well, I understand that. I'm on real, real quickly. I got to tell you, real, real fast. I'll go fast. This guy is in the trucking business. He's frustrated. I ran into him yesterday. I haven't seen him in six months. Shook hands. How you doing? Hey, how's it going? We talked. He goes, I got a $500 fine because his 140 foot beam calling for the state to build a bridge on his big truck was six inches longer. $500 fine and another thousand dollar permit, and it was for a state bridge. Those kind of things have to stop. They're about to go out of business because they're just beaten to death. Yeah. I agree with you that 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 should never have been. I mean, imagine if you were in that person's shoes. Um, and I, I mean, I've heard of stories of someone being, uh, d d d you know, uh, go, go arrested for having two fishing poles, like in a place where they can only have one fishing pole, and just ridiculous oh. stuff like that. I mean, it's, well. it's got to stop. People grown wrong kind of orchids, uh, you know, spending time in jail. Amish people selling milk, raw milk, and and, and they're being raided. I, I mean, it, it's it's people having lemon. Lemonade stands being told to government. Government's going to control it if they can, and we're allowing it. And if we don't stop it, we're never going to win. Yeah, I, I think the main point is to how do we have accountability? Well, our elections is is a major place where we can. I mean, just sending you is going to send a message in itself. Just the fact that you're not a Republican and Democrat. I mean, let's keep the big picture here going. And, and what about um? Here's another issue. Uh, the, the the NDAA. Like, I don't know how familiar you are with that, but there's two provisions that were in there that that really. Um, is a vote against the Constitution. It really says, like, you, you know, if the president so deems, I, I mean, and you might not ever even hear about this because nope. they, they, nope. they don't even no have to tell you. So you would not. That's why you have 900 executive orders right now. I'll just bypass the Congress. I won't ask anybody. I'll bypass the Constitution. I write it. It's good to go. Next question. Yeah, he was so hypocritical. He was like, he's a constitutional <laughs> scholar, supposedly, and he promised yeah. no signing statements. But he really wasn't. R right. And, and now the third issue, um, uh, it's kind of the drug law, but more so, because I don't think this gets enough attention, is industrial hemp. I mean, I think it's kind of um, crazy that, uh, forget the, you know, marijuana and all that. I'm just talking purely about industrial hemp. Um, yeah, I used to use it, actually, making plaster molds. Yeah. 
So, you, I mean, it, for, yeah, I, Henry Ford did as well. You, it's a good right. resin. It's a form of tooling. It's used for tooling to make models out of so that you can have a, a final tooling product. It's used every day. So you think we should be able to um, I export that instead of just being able to import it? Okay, absolutely. All right, great. And uh, uh, now the last question we usually ask people is, um, like, you're in a campaign right now, so your thought process might be a little different than it was a year ago. Um, I mean, you're in the arena. You're in position. You're in position if people feel like, you know what, I want another choice this year. I want to vote for the Constitution, and, um, and which I definitely think um, is definitely worth fighting for. Uh, I'm fighting. I'm, gonna, I'm putting everything I have on the line, including my job. So. so, so who are some people that have been on your mind recently, and 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 why? Pe past figures, people you've been reading about, people nowadays, just some people that like might have been inspiring that are currently on your minds. Um, uh, I had, a, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure exactly where you're going, but I'll try this. You know, I, just just about everything Ron Paul says makes sense. <laughs> a lot of people got said, oh, I think he's nuts. Oh my goodness, I I, I don't know. You could think he's nuts, and Nancy Pelosi's saying, I don't know how that works, but. Well, he got like things. 45, or, or no, he got like a huge, he, he, he got second place, and, and it was just by two percentages off in yeah. Iowa in, in the Republican primary. Um, and, and then uh, he didn't win that, but he kind of dropped off from there. He did incredibly well working against, uh, like as a David against a Goliath system. So I think his, That's what I'm doing. a lot of people resonated with him, actually. Well, and I do too, and, and, and he's, he's a big answer. There's, there's a lot of different inspirations, though. I just, I just think that sitting back and not doing anything, and you're having the masses get poorer and poorer, you're having half a dozen people at the top of every one of the giant corporations get richer and richer, is a really bad plan. I don't think it's going to work. The whole thing is broken, and we need to sit down and say, okay, this isn't working. We're not representing the people. The whole job was to represent the people. People always ask me, what do I think of this? What do I think of that? And my answer is always the same. What do you think? Tell me what you think. And I'll express that. I'm not supposed to go there and think, okay, now I'm in, and I'm going to win. Now I'm in office. Well, just out of curiosity, who's some of your past favorite presidents or Congress people? Or you, well, I'll you know. give you one. I think Gerald Ford was a way, way better president than he was ever given credit for. Yeah. It, actually, Gerald Ford was, was a really good president. Uh, Ronald Reagan, I didn't agree with everything Ronald Reagan did, but Reagan did a lot of wonderful things for this country. I had no problem with that. Uh, an awful lot of people believe that Bill Clinton was absolutely spectacular. 9-11 uh, happened because of Bill Clinton, so I'm probably not going to agree. Uh, yeah, he did. So Ronald Reagan, I don't agree with his deficit spending, of course, but, but I mean, he did bring an optimism. People felt proud to be an American. Gerald Ford. Uh, I mean, let me tell you why Ronald Reagan you. was. He was only president. The reason, for, yeah. the, the reason those guys were important, though, is remember what happened the minute Ronald Reagan got in. The, I mean, within the hour. Iran said, okay, where do you want these prisoners delivered? This guy's serious. The last guy, oh, we held him. You remember, we had Ted Koppel on every night, day number such and such, the Iranian hostages. Day number that, and went to three, going and going and going. Jimmy Carter wasn't going to do anything about it. They knew Reagan was coming, though. He's got, he's got a cowboy hat and spurs. He's coming. And he's not going to do it lightly. He is a tough guy. We better do something. They immediately wanted to negotiate on how we're going to do it, and he got it done overnight. He didn't do it, but but sometimes the president and the being presidential has all to do with what's in the world. You don't bow to people, you don't apologize to anybody, and then say you need to give us some more money and make sure that we're propped up over here. But go ahead and bow and kiss my hand. That's not going to work. That's not a night. That's not what, what we are as Americans and have a constitution. Yeah, I, 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 it, it's the, the the reason why we're doing all this is basically, I, I mean, uh, a common ground it's called libertarian progressive. I think at this time there's an urgency. Um, I love the Constitution, not just because it's a written on a piece of paper. It's it's those 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 uh, bills, um, the Bill of Rights, uh, the rest of the amendments that. Um, that are so dear. I mean, it's stuff people have been fighting for for the, like the, and it's been refined over the last thousands of years. I mean, it recognizes us as individuals and in having these uh, natural God-given rights. Um, and it, uh, I tell you one, of the, I tell you one of the things that we veered away from the Constitution and, and the right thing to do so far that I truly, honestly believe that the biggest form of discrimination in this country, in the workplace, everywhere, is affirmative action. 
I cannot even begin. You don't have enough time for me to tell you how many times I've been told I would love to hire you. I would hire you in a minute, but I have to hire somebody over here. It's not even semi-qualified. Well, there's a lot of debate going on on that, even in like um, you know the black community, is saying like eventually we're going to have to go beyond that. I mean, I can understand for a period of time, maybe I understood it. In the I understood it. In this but, but but how are you going to have like a um, uh, an egalitarian like I'm going to judge you by your character, not by the color of your skin? Society with that lingering on. Now, eventually, um, I mean, we I, I hope that we do have that like w colorblind, like uh, like where I you're do. judged by the uh, character. I, I I know, and and, and it's 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 um it, so so we will have to get rid of that. I would also say we should get rid of the affirmative action um, that goes to the very rich and and, and well connected in, in, in this country too, because they're are also getting some kind of affirmative action. We're having almost an affirmative action with the Republicans and Democrats when they assign, you know, committee memberships and things like that. So I, I'd say um, let's get rid of it all, you, you know, and have a true equal playing field. And um, you know, we talk about all these special committees and all these things that happen in Congress. And I know that there are going to be times, especially investigative committees, where they're going to be necessary. Why do we have to have committees sit down and talk about this? Why don't everybody show up in the big room? Here's the subject. One thing. Yes or no? Okay, let's move on. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, no. no. The full House down. debate on something, yeah. I mean, all these committees oh. were created because of the Republicans and Democrats, and it does it does um, have, help them uh, ground their power even more. But, um, but it's counterproductive to the system, but it makes it feel great because they got their bill passed. You hear it every time. They don't ever come out on the news when they're interviewed and say, the American people got this today. They say... Uh, my name's on this, and I got that passed today. Oh, great. Yeah, and if a bill is more pages in the Constitution, I mean, maybe we, we don't need that bill, or maybe it should be broken up into a couple different parts, and we can vote on each of those provisions itself. Yeah. Look look at the money that's been spent on trying to make sure we don't have a line item veto. Oh, don't do that. We've got to include everything in this or nothing. That's absolutely, all or nothing doesn't work. You're right back to no flexibility and common sense. Well, one thing I would warn about the line item veto is it, it might make the executive even more stronger by, by saying, hey, if you do this for me, then I won't line item, you you know, your little thing there. Uh, but, uh, okay, some issues that we need to deal with, we, a, lot of, a lot of businesses are there for those reasons, too. Yeah. Things are out of People aren't even making a living anymore. And don't worry, the money's still being made out there. It's just not being distributed. Well, well, well one, one way we where you can uh, ensure success nowadays, and hopefully will change it, is by a lobbyist. By a lobbyist, and, and, and the investment, the return on your investment um, is going to be probably oh. like tenfold. So if you really want to be successful now, either start a bank and, 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 and make a lot of um, uh, investments that w are going to fail or not, um, and then and become really big so that uh, if you fail, that you'll like be a detriment to the whole economy. E <laughs> e either that or buy a lobbyist. And, and so, I mean, th those are, that's that's a real like way to well, success well, nowadays. Well, right back, kind of what we talked about a little bit ago was the same thing as the, the mega mart okay i don't want a giant bank what's well, 50 stories looking at all these people no i want to walk in the bank they know your first name how you doing today craig nice to see you like i have with, with spirit bank or, or fm here in Tulsa. you walk in they know you by name how you doing and why does it have to be so big no personal anymore nobody knows anything it's all guidelines it's all regs and guidelines and it's so big that it doesn't work. Well, because they've, they, well, the, there used to be probably more competition, just like there used to be more media outlets. Now it's growing again with the internet, and, and that helps small and mid-sized businesses. But um, the reason is because there's boom and bust cycles, and every time there's a boom and bust, a lot of the, um, w which is, you c some could say could be uh, predictable because of the way the Fed raises and lowers interest rates. And then you have these big uh, conglomerates that buy up everything for pennies on the dollar after the bust. Because because of the predictable uh, boom and bust cycle, and uh, well, you can you can you want to fold something into that even more important insider trading with all the with all your Washington officials is especially despicable. Yeah, I remember the Speaker of the House made a comment on that about very many months ago. Said, "Well, yes, we are involved in that, but it's not illegal because Republicans haven't passed a law to make it that way yet." Well, that's dumb. That's a worst. Ex that's an excuse, and uh, and, and a lot of the laws they're writing. I mean, if they knew like Obamacare, the stocks. You, you know, for these insurance companies, they, they knew that, so they probably bought some stock in insurance companies right before they passed that bill. I guarantee they did. Yeah, absolutely. And there's nothing wrong with that because we're in that position, and that's where you put us. And as long as you keep me here and water me, I'll just keep growing.
<laughs> so, <laughs> so, so we're talking about the most qualified candidate. I, I mean, at least you've had a real job too. That's another thing. Hardly any of these people had like Nancy I have had Pelosi. Some incredible jobs. Yeah, I, so we need to elect people with real jobs that are going to represent us. Um, and, uh, well, the, the the real final question here is what sure. what, what events are you going to have coming up? Are you going to be in any debates coming up? Have you been in debates there's that a, people can watch online? There's a Midtown Rotary coming up. I don't think there's any more actual debates to be scheduled. I was left out of one. I was told I wasn't a viable candidate as an independent. I'm very angry with him. I don't know why. It's a, 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 a university. Or Roberts University. I would say the your opponents have, aren't viable candidates because Republican Democrats have a 10% approval rating. The highest um, voting block is independents. You got enough signatures to be on the ballot. And for them to say that you're not a viable candidate, I mean, that's an insult to their readership. Well, it's, it's kind of crazy. But Oral Roberts University, fine institution here in Tulsa. Everybody's heard of them, I'm sure. It's pretty hard not to have. Um, they had a wonderful debate, and they were open-armed about it. Another school north of here, I won't say their name because of legal reasons that are coming their way, is, oh, no, well, we decided not to do it. Oh, no, we didn't, we didn't. And another place I found out I missed out on them. But they always want to leave the independent out if they can because you're just muddying up the water. So you were in one debate then, actually. Um, yes. Okay, that's it. And, and there's little forums here and there. There's not a lot planned. There's, you know, I, what I'm doing is I'm getting out. I'm getting ready to go out here in just a little bit after this. And I go out and I go out and I walk the street and talk to people and, and visit. And almost everybody I've talked to said, I'm going independent. I've had it. Hey, you know so those airplanes gonna... that have those big streamer letters that, like, like fly on the back, like, for advertisements and stuff? <laughs> maybe maybe yeah. you could have, like, um, Craig Allen, C-R-A-I-G-A-L-L-E-N-F-O-R, Congress. Dot com or Craig Allen for Congress, vote independent, vote for the Constitution or something like, and just fly around Oklahoma yeah. or something. That would be pretty well, cool. It would, but it's just a tiny problem. Money. <laughs> I don't make any money. I don't have enough money to, to afford to go do. Uh, I, it would be a great idea. I think the banners are great. I see them in Florida all the time, running up and down the coast. You know, who's having a who's having a big cookout tonight? Or whatever. yeah, a lot of people have those. Like you know, they'll ask their spouse if they'll marry them with one of those. Hey, honey, look up in the sky. <laughs> but uh, yeah, those are good. But but well, we the local we need here, a divorce very, very, from the Republicans and Democrats. Go no ahead. doubt about it. I did divorce them. I've changed over to independent. I take a lot of criticism for it. But I've also had a lot of people say, you know, I I, I think I understand why. The main reason I did this, though, so that everybody knows. I had a very serious subject, it's serious to me, and my, it's job-related, that needs to be addressed. That nobody, well, a few people have addressed it. Sully addressed it after the, the um, ditching in the Hudson. Uh, it was addressed after the accident in Buffalo. Uh, there's some serious issues that need to be addressed, and they don't want it. They ever, we just keep putting it aside and putting it aside. There's some safety things that really need to be dis set down and logically discussed and implemented, and we won't do it because it's just going to cost too much, and we'd rather just take a chance, and I think that's a really bad idea. So I was told by my congressmen and senators that that's not going to happen. They, they're the biggest lobby in the country. If you're going to try to do that, you better just be ready to do it yourself. Yeah, I so, so, I mean, okay. problems... I'll do it. And, 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 and you're in position, I mean, if people want to... And, you're the only alternative candidate in your district, I believe. I mean, oh, isn't that great? Usually there's five or six. I'm it. Yeah, you're it. So, I mean, if you're a libertarian, if you're a Green Party candidate, if you're a disgruntled Democrat, which you should be, if you're a disgruntled Republican, which you probably should be as well, um, I mean, uh, he, here's the most qualified candidates. I, I would. Uh, it's, I don't see why people shouldn't give you a, 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 a you, you know, a two-year term here to see what you can do. I mean, absolutely, give me a two-year. If you don't like it, if I don't like it, I'll leave. I mean, a shot a heard around the world. What would that uh, sound like? That would sound like the headlines on November seventh, saying, you know what? There's an unprecedented amount um, of uh, people elected to Congress this year uh, who are not Republicans and, and Democrats, and. Um, so, so that that's what we need. I mean, right now we need uh, the, the Congress to reflect the sentiments of the American people, which we, is... We do, and I've talked to a lot of people about this, and mainly what, what comes out of it is real simple. Well, I would love to vote for you, but if I don't go this way, we're, I probably won't have a job because if we don't get this passed and that passed, they've already promised us, and I have to do that. Yeah, well, the 20 years of the lesser of two evils might as well just equal one really bad evil. I mean, we can work, you know, hope, let's think about 10 years from now. I mean, where are we going to be in 10 years? Are we still going to be in the same situation voting between Obama and, uh, and, and, and so on? And, um, I mean, 
We are if we don't change something quick. And I mean, one thing I want everybody to do, I want I want everybody to get on the bandwagon a little bit. Why do I just just ask yourselves? Why can't we say and why don't we have the pledge of allegiance in school in the morning? I just want to know why that is so. That that offends somebody so much. I have an American flag right outside my door. Yeah, because they probably want a UN pledge of allegiance instead. I, I mean, but uh, but this is the United States of America, and that's what it is. And if you're offended by it, you probably need a U-Haul. Right. You know, I, I agree with you. I, I mean, it's the Republicans have, let's not forget, in the beginning of the year 2000 with President Bush, they've had a full house. And what do they do? They increase spending. They raise the the, 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 um, the, the debt ceiling. They introduce this, um, you, you know, Medicare prescription tr drug law, and, 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 and they uh, invaded our privacies. Then then let's not forget Obama. He had a full Congress, just like Bush did. He, like there's Democrats that own the House and the Senate. And, you know, they pass Obamacare. He also um, violates our civil liberties, uh, stunts competition. They both voted for the bailouts. I, I mean, they, so they've already had a full uh, Congress, each of these parties, within the last decade. And, and people— and both, sides, and both sides claim I can't get anything done because I don't control the Congress. That, that's right. They, they were given two years, <laughs> and people were so sick of what they did those two years that they did that they voted them out. What what the— and we're we're almost. I mean, we're talking about Republicans, Democrats. I mean, true democracy and a true republic is what we want, it's not these false um, Republican and Democrat titles. How about a true United States of America um, party or, or non-party, just as independence? Uh, uh, that you know, return to the Constitution, so to That's say. That's exactly right. You know, back to love it or leave it. Yeah, and the you know, Constitution we, is a most advanced form of society that we've ever had. I mean, people are saying we're going, you, you know, you want to go back to the Constitution. Now, actually, it's the most futuristic uh, uh, idea that's been out there. I mean, tyranny, special interests, having special committees, and, and all these, like, outrageous laws where, you know, you're that fine. Thing to, that thing was put together with foresight. I can't even imagine what they must have been thinking at the time. Yeah. How that they could see so many things that were headed that way that we have to be, that we have to try to, to keep our guidelines to keep up between the ditches somehow. Yeah, it's made for the 21st century and beyond. I, I mean, if we want exactly. to go forward, I mean, let's use the most advanced document that we have and set of rules. I mean, if I picture a future society, I, I, I don't want to go back to tyranny and, and serfdom and, and, you know, nobles and Robin Hood and the Sheriff Nottingham. I'd rather go forward to where everything's transparent, open, accountable. I mean, the Constitution almost was written for the Internet age. And uh, Don't forget the word rule as a ruler is not in the Constitution. And the president we have currently right now has used that word. We'll be, when we get in office, we'll be free to rule. That word has come out over and over. Now, I don't like that. He may not use that word himself, but his surrounding people do, and he never comes out and says, that's not what we're standing for. If, you, if you're accused of that and you don't say anything about it and rebut it, then you're for it. Yeah, so when people are looking at the ballot, I mean, independence this year, I think, kind of means, uh, I mean, things, if we don't, if we don't vote for someone different this year, again, what's going to happen? Bigger budgets, a higher police state, less, you know, repression of competition. It's going to well, be the, no budget. It's, it's going to be the same thing we've had, but it's just going to be magnified even more because of the compounding problems. And uh, so, I mean, maybe I think eventually... The paradigm will shift, and and just like the Republican Party was a third party at one point, um, the the path of least resistance. I mean, as far as presidential politics, I kind of stay out of that because people are mostly have decided what they want in that, and it's it's, it's too contentious. Um, but at the congressional level. That's where we can make a huge difference. The, the founding fathers in their foresight did put in an emergency break into our uh, Constitution. It's called the House of Representatives. It's every That's two right. years we can lift up this emergency break. We don't have to drive off the cliff with whatever parties in power. And I don't think it matters which one it is um, because they, they both have raised the debt ceiling so many times. And, and, and they both do the opposite of what they say. Their actions speak louder than their words. We can pull this emergency break. It's called the House 
House of Representatives. It's it's not radical. This is something that's practical, and it's actually very prudent to do. Um, and uh, so, Craig, I do appreciate your time today, and uh, I'll say goodbye to you real quick after the interview. But uh, thanks for, thank you, sir, for uh, talking to us as a, a media outlet um, to get your voice out to the people, not being afraid to uh, go into any of the questions that I've uh, asked here. Um, and oh, uh, not at all. I, I have no fear. Well, thank you again, sir, and um, uh, Godspeed, and I'll say goodbye to you real quick after the interview. Thanks, sir. Okay. Thank you very much.